guys, welcome back. My name is Morgan. This is my channel, Pisces Paperback. And Marcy got a new squeaky toy the other day and has not stopped squeaking it, but I really need to film an intro to my new reading vlog. Marcy. Basically, I have decided to participate in the Smutathon, which is taking place from January 4th to January 11th. It is currently, oh my God, currently January 5th. And I'm not gonna get a second of peace to talk to you guys, apparently. For this readathon, um, if you're related to me, because I know my family watches my videos, please don't watch this one because I'm gonna be talking about basically fiction, romance that is very smutty. And I don't know if I want you listening to me talk about that, you know, for this whole video. So let's just not go there and you cannot watch this time, okay? I'm not particularly paying attention to these, like this the different prompts for this one. I decided that I was going to get as many of these as I could for free from the Apple Books app, like if there was any specials. And fortunately there is a special thing going on right now where you can get the first book in a romance series free to just like try out the series and see if you like it. So let me tell you the eight things that I have picked that I'm going to try and read this week. They are Ruthless King by Megan March. This is actually a recommended to me one. My friend Hannah really likes Megan March and I thought I'd give her a try. I also have Trouble by Lexi Timms, Awakened by Brenda K. Davies, The Play by J.H. Uh, Croy, Rocky Mountain Heat by Vivian Arend, For the Love of Scott by Jen Fitzgerald, Give Me Love by Paige P. Horn, and Your Irresistible Love by Layla Hagen. Um, Your Irresistible Love is the one I'm probably least interested in, so I'll probably save that to the end. Give Me Love, I am particularly interested in. I don't know why. For the Love of Scott is going to, is like an LGBTQ one, and it's the shortest out of all of them. So that'll be fun. I'm just going to go with the flow and see what happens. I am currently, as of right now when I'm filming this clip, like 2% from the end of the play, but I'm going to right now insert a clip from earlier today when I was not that quite that far into the play. Hello, we are lying on my couch, just hanging out, and I am reading the play by name, I forgot, of the author. And I think I'm like 15% into the ebook right now. It's fine so far. Liam Reed is a soccer player on the Seattle team who has an injured knee and Olivia Bowen. Olivia Bowen is his orthopedic surgeon. And I mean, they kissed already, but it's because he like, she was like explaining the timeline of his like knee surgery. And he was like, I want to taste you. And it was kind of weird, especially in a medical setting. Hi baby. Um, but other than that, it's also kind of weird because she keeps insisting that sex is boring. And like, obviously, that's like fun. I think it's more that um, this book is very heavy on the telling and not the showing. So like a lot of the character things that we've learned about Olivia and Liam were just like straight up like told instead of in any way shown by, you know, their actions. She's so cute. She's my baby. The writing isn't great, but... I'm having a good time, so. Now that I'm basically at the end, honestly, this was more of just like a cut and dry sports romance, I feel like. I did like it. I would say the writing was somewhat repetitive. So for example, the same phrases would be used to describe the same things over and over again. And it was just kind of like weird. But I have to say, the sexy scenes were particularly sexy and steamy. They did make me blush a little bit. And those were actually very well done sex scenes. It wasn't a bust. I think Liam is just kind of generic. And I hated that every time he would see her, he was like, hello, love. But they spelled love like L-U-V. You know what I mean? But like they, and it was like really weird. And, but it was fun. I did like that Olivia like had a personality because a lot of the times the heroines just don't have personalities in romances. It was good. And I'm probably end up gonna, gonna end up giving it three and a half stars, three and a half, four stars. Haven't quite decided yet, but yeah, definitely starting off on a pretty good note. Hello again, you can see my kind of messy, unfurnished uh, 
front room behind me but I just want to update you I finished the play I gave it three and a half stars maybe I'll just wait till the end of the vlog to like recap all my ratings but it was good the sex scenes were like a plus very steamy I feel like they were like heavy on foreplay which is un I, I don't think as typical but they were really well written um which can't really be said for the rest of the book which wasn't badly written by any stretch of the imagination but wasn't like great it was like on the okay side of average you know what I mean so that wasn't the best but I still really enjoyed it and I am probably gonna read the rest of the series because like they're about British athletes in America and it's like <laughs> Why not? I did start the next book for Smutathon and it is Trouble by Lexi Tins. And basically this uh, book starts off with the girl, the main girl, um, Sadie, breaking up with her abusive ex-boyfriend. And so she leaves that confrontation and walks into a kickboxing gym near her house and kind of um, I mean, that's where I am right now. I'm like 15% in, not very far, but she has just signed up to get a kickboxing subscription. She's met the, um, one of the co-owners, it's like a mom and son duo, and she's like met both of them, and he's like the kickboxing instructor. So I think that is the direction that this is all going in, and I'm very excited. So I'm 30% in now to um, Trouble. And the cutest thing, so the guy in this, his name's Troy, he's the kickboxing instructor, like I said, and he rides a motorcycle, and he's talking about how every Wednesday he likes to ride on his motorcycle with his boys, and he loves, like, riding in the dark with the skies overhead, and then there's this little sentence where he's like, he'd never tell anybody, but he loved when it started to get early, darker earlier in the day because it meant Christmas his favorite time of year was coming and I'm like that's so fucking cute <laughs> that's so, he's like this big muscly dude and he's like I love Christmas <laughs> I'm like, that's so cute <laughs> anyway it's good so far but um I will say the two main characters have in really interacted that much yet and we're already 30% in um, and it's not very long, so I'm curious to see, like, what the catalyst for their relationship is going to be, since there's nothing happening there. Uh, she just thinks he's, like, really freaking hot, and he's like, I'm gonna help her learn how to defend herself, and also I have no time in my life for a relationship, like, always, so, <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Good morning! So, it's actually Tuesday instead of Monday. I did not really update yesterday. And I probably should have because I finished three things yesterday. Um, yeah, so I finished Trouble by Lexi Timms. I gave it two stars. Um, that was the one about the kickboxing teacher and the girl who was leaving her abusive boyfriend. My biggest problem with that is that there was literally no romantic interaction between the main two characters until 85% through the book. And then they have sex and the scene is so abrupt that I thought it was a dream. Like I literally thought that it was a dream sequence. And when it wasn't, I had to go back and reread it to make sure I didn't miss anything. But it literally goes from them like just at the beginning stages of considering that they like each other romantically to him waking her up by knocking her on her front door with, and having coffee and then walking in and like kissing her and being like I can't stay away and it was just very abrupt it also had a cliffhanger ending because I I assumed because it was a series but the first book in a series but I always just assume that romance series are like the ones where you like can read each of them independently so I guess I just was surprised and it kind of makes sense why the pacing was so weird. Like, there wasn't, like, that much conflict. But honestly, this book would have been, like, a good outline for the first half of a book. It just, there wasn't enough there to make it a good book on its own. And there were just way too many descriptions of the kickboxing classes. Like, unnecessarily long and in-depth. And it was just kind of weird. And I just wasn't really a huge fan of it the writing was also 
not the best. Honestly, it wasn't very smutty. The next, the, the reason that I didn't update is because the two things that I read yesterday for Smutathon just weren't very smutty and I was like really disappointed. The next thing I read was For the Love of Scott by Jen Fitzgerald. This is an LGBT, this is the shortest thing I read. It was only like 70 or 90 pages, something like that. And basically this is about a veteran who lost a leg in the war and I guess now he runs a dog kennel and he like starts to date this guy, Ben, short for Benigan, by the way. Um, so that's kind of weird. And honestly, this book was like, and like his dog gets hurt and then he freaks out and tries to break up with Ben. Honestly, this book was just like too short for there to be any like real stakes. Like nothing felt important, but it was kind of cute. So I gave it two stars. The writing was even worse than Trouble though. Like, honestly bad writing. Each each of the sentences independently, not like unforgivable, but like put together, it was hard to read, honestly. Like I, they got better as it went on, but the first half of that was like incomprehensible gibberish to my eyes. And then I was like, you know what? I have one day left on my audiobook hold for Red, White, and Royal Blue. I have not, I've listened to 5% of it. And I had stopped because something embarrassing was happening. And I have crazy secondhand embarrassment. So I had to stop listening at like 5% because I was like really getting anxious. Um, so I was like, I need a marathon listen to Red, White, and Royal Blue. And so I did. And it was, first of all, smuttier than either of the two books I got from like the erotic romance section. Look at the cover that Trouble has. Like this looks so promising. Why did it do me dirty like that, you know? Um, but I read White, Red, White, and Royal Blue. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. I didn't take any video because I was a little embarrassed, but I was like listening to the audiobook last night and just sobbing, just sobbing to myself. I need to finish doing an eyebrow before I talk about this book. It was, why is one of my eyebrows like so much darker than the other? That's really embarrassing. Red, White, and Royal Blue was so special. It was so good. It was so well written. It was kind of in a funny tense that I know a lot of people kind of got bothered by because it was in third person present tense. Um, but I loved it. I loved that book so much. I loved Alex. I love Henry. Like... Like, I'm gonna cry. Like, I really loved it so much. And there was so much there that was just so special and, like, deeply relatable um, to, like, my life. And despite the fact that I'm not the daughter of the president or a prince of Wales, you know what I mean? Like, it was so good. And it was so funny and sweet and earnest. And I just don't know if I honestly have any more words to explain how much I loved that book because it just means so much to me already. And I can't wait to get my own copy. And I don't annotate books. I've told you I don't annotate books, but I want to go through and I want to, I want to sticky note some of my favorite parts of that because I don't know how, I don't know how I went like a whole year without reading it. It was so good. It like makes me upset how good it was. So I'm not going to talk about that. But I am going to count it for the Smutathon because dear lord, it was hornier than either of the two novellas I read, even though they're like supposed to be smutty. Anyway, um, that was kind of disappointing. Not Red, White, and Royal Blue, the other two. And now I'm going to start my reading of Ruthless King by Megan March which was a recommendation from my good friend, Hannah. So I'm excited to start that. Hello, I am home from work. It is like eight something right now. I had dinner and stuff like that. My dog's hanging out. Can you see her? Hi. Um, anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a little update about what I did today, reading wise. So I did a lot. I think I talked about this this morning, but I, was starting to listen to Ruthless King by Megan March. Um, that ended up being like a super short audiobook. I think it was six hours long and I listened to it on double time. So 
when I listen to audiobooks that are six hours long, it only takes me like three hours, which means that I flew through that and I finished it while I was getting my lunch. Um, and I really liked it. I liked it a lot. So basically the premise of this whole thing is that there is a woman named Kira Kilgore. She owns a whiskey distillery in New Orleans and her late husband um, took out a loan from like a mobster, like the underground, like king of New Orleans, whose name is Lachlan Mount, Lachlan Mount. Um, and so she doesn't have the money to pay back like half a mil. So she has to pay back that debt, if you know what I mean. And had a cliffhanger ending. And I know, okay, I was thinking about this today because I also finished, um, what was it called? Trouble, like yesterday. So it's like fresh, fresh on the brain. And basically, I think the difference between this trilogy that has like a cliffhanger ending and that trilogy which had a cliffhanger ending is that the the pairing in this book meets first of all in the first chapter they meet in the first chapter and then their relationship begins to develop immediately and so there is enough like romantic content to make the book feel like a complete book and I will also say I have now completed the second book in that series which is called Defiant Queen um it was an it was like a five hour audiobook so it was even shorter than the last one this one is also uh you know cliffhanger ending and I think now that I have I haven't finished it I'm going to finish the third audiobook I'm going to start it tomorrow probably and read it all tomorrow but basically um I think now that I have some like context for what the overall story is, I can kind of see how it works as a trilogy and how it doesn't. I still think from what I've seen, there's not quite enough like plot con conflict to really need three books, but this would have been an insanely long romance novel. You know what I mean? Like the, this one was already like a lot. So um, I just think, I'm sorry, Marcy is like, waiting for me to hold it and then freaking out like she wants to play tug of war but with a squeaky toy it's kind of difficult <laughs> like she's waiting and then i hold it again and then she you know does I'm gonna keep doing that <laughs> um it I still don't think it has quite enough plot to really need to have three books but I do think it does benefit from not having to be rushed the other plus side of that is there are <laughs> a lot of sex scenes and they're like pretty freaking good um obviously with just the the nature of the plot like She's literally paying back a financial debt through like, you know, sexual favors and whatever, like whatnot. There is like this, you know, undertone of coercion that kind of starts their relationship. And that is just something that, you know, goes hand in hand with the type of romance that this is. So if that's not something that you're comfortable with, um, I definitely wouldn't suggest this one. I mean, I'm not particularly comfortable with it. It definitely took me like, a while into the first book to really be like, okay, I just need to like let go of my like things about that if I want to enjoy it. But once I did, I really liked it. I really liked their dynamic. It's really cool to see them like falling in love. And again, because it's spread out over the three books, I really have the time to get into that and explore it rather than rushing it because the plot, the overarching plot would make sense for like two books. It doesn't really need to be three, but you know, it's okay, and I'm very excited to read the third one, which I think is called Sinful Empire. So I just finished the third book in the Mount Trilogy, which is the books where Kira, the whiskey lady, is like having to repay a debt to Lockwood Mount, the mob boss. Um, and I finished the third book, and it was so good. <laughs> it was so good. And in total, the three audiobooks together are about 16 hours, which honestly is the length of like 
uh, other books that I read. So like this could have just been one long book. It's kind of, it's kind of how the plot unfolds. Is the plot arc is as if it was one long book. But honestly, I loved it. I loved all of it. The relationship. There are much fewer sex scenes in the third one, and. I think that works because at this point their relationship has developed enough that the sex isn't particularly necessary to bring them together in an emotionally significant way. Um, I stand a power couple so fucking hard <laughs> and it was like really good. Like I don't know what to say. It was a little bit more violent than the first two, a little bit more gruesome in some places, but it was so cute in other places. and. They communicated, and I was like, oh, that's sexy when they communicate. Uh, yeah, and just like, I love when guys are like all up in their feelings about the women in these books. So I'm also on my way to get lunch. <laughs> it's like the middle of the day and I'm walking to Subway. So it's just been good. It's just been fun to just speed through these books. You like can't see me at all because of the sun behind me, but mm, it's okay. Um, yeah, it's just been really fun to read these books because they're just like, I mean, they're not like light and fluffy, but they're just like fun to read. And this is also, I think, the first like dark, like darker romance that I've read and really enjoyed. Uh, so we love that. Okay, I have gotten me sandwich. And another thing I think is funny is that this series gets much less like kinky steamy as the books progress and it's because you like see their relationship grow it's so good oh it's so good i also think it definitely makes up for the last few not very smutty books i read aka <laughs> trouble and uh for the love of scott the love of scott like has like one kiss in it uh, oh, that reminds me. Something I wanted to talk about is that I was trying to find an LGBT smutty thing, which eventually I read Red, White, and Royal Blue. I was looking through the free LGBTQ section on Apple Books when I was getting all my ebooks that I was going to read this week. And honestly, like, they didn't really look that good, first of all. And then, second of all, half of them were like threesomes, where it's like a heterosexual couple who like want to invite another woman into their bed and I just feel like maybe it's because I'm not reading them and you need to get the full context but I feel like just objectively would that be in like like unless I know for a fact that there is some sort of like queerness going on in the story to me it just seems as like a fetishization of bisexual women if that kind of makes sense I don't know it just kind of rubs me the wrong way so I didn't pick any of those um I don't know if I mentioned this but I'm also in the middle of Give Me Love by Paige P. Horn and I like it well enough it's about you know Bryce and Catherine and how his mom bought drugs from her dad and they're like on a date right now they went to go see a movie at a drive-in movie theater but they're like just friends so they're calling it hanging out and it's like I mean, there's definitely tension between them. You can always already feel that there's like a little bit of chemistry and that's always a bonus. I hate when you read a romance and it's like the chemistry between the two people is like two ice cubes sitting next to each other. Like, who wants that? I finished another one. It was Give Me Love by Paige P. Horn. And it was like, Okay, I gave it three stars. Oh, I wasn't gonna do ratings and stuff until the end. Forget I said that. Um, it was just like, okay, so Give Me Love. It's about Catherine and Bryce. I've said this and they meet like at a bar and they both have troubled histories. And oh my God, no, that's a, Marcy has not her toy. Give me that. Anyway, there's the troublemaker. Um, the reason I think I didn't like it that much is because it was kind of like a watered down version of the Megan March books I had just read. So like Bryce was trying to be this like dark uh, casino, like mobster dude, like dealing drugs and stuff. But like, honestly, the story just didn't really go there in terms of darkness. 
Um, so it didn't really like feel as intense. Um, and then I actually liked Catherine a lot. I thought she was really interesting. She was one of those like, oh, I had a terrible childhood, so it, it's really hard for me to like bond with people and like talk about my past. And for her, it like felt legit. Like I liked her. But, and I think also what redeems it, because this is also one that's in a series where it's like not self-contained stories and pairings within each book, which I didn't know. And I wish I had known because I kind of wish it wasn't. Like, I'm not going to read the rest of the story, so I don't care how they end up together because it's part of a four-part series. And I, I don't know if it's like the first two books are their stories and the rest are not. But, like, either way, I'm not really interested in reading more. But they do meet really fast and their relationship starts developing pretty quickly. Um, so it doesn't feel as much of a lackluster book like with nothing going on in it here's another thing we know as readers like that Kath Catherine's dad sold drugs to Bryce's mom right but within the course of the story that isn't really like that's really not hinted it's like stated in one of the first beginning chapters um but it's never really shown or like reference to in any way um until like the very end of the story so it was just kind of weird now we are cuddling Ooh, my hands in the frame now we're cuddling because i'm home i'm about to make myself some dinner and i actually started listening to on the drive home i started listening to um lover revealed what are you doing lover revealed by jr ward that is the fourth book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series, um, which I have been reading, and I, are, it's definitely smutty. These are some, definitely some smutty books, but I like it so far. I think I'm like an hour in, and it's like a pretty long audiobook, so I like it. This is the one about, Br not Bryce, Butch and Marissa. So Butch is a human man who has been in the series since the first book and he's kind of bonded with the black dagger brotherhood which are like the vampire warriors um and marissa is the former shellin which is basically like wife um slash person that male vampires drink from like get like feed from blood wise and except for that the, the She's the former Shellen of the King, who is the main man in the first book in this series. But she, like, never bonded with him, and he only fed from her, but never, like, married her officially. So she is now kind of, like, a society reject, and Butch is like, I don't know how I fit in in the vampire society. Um, but I'm very, very not far into it. I will say, these books were not written... Actually, I think this book is written in 2007, um, so it's not like that long ago, and it does use the word she-male um, in reference to a, uh, she's a vampire, like, security guard at one of the bars, and she, she's described it as being, like, really, like, muscly and having, like, a short men's haircut, and um, she's like, I'm not a she-male, if that's what you're thinking, as she's, like, coming on to one of the guys. So wasn't super comfortable with that I'm gonna like keep reading but I definitely think that is something to be aware of I don't know if it's gonna happen again but you know it is what it is so yeah that's what I'm doing right now I'm gonna listen to Lover Reveal while I make some ramen I think and we'll see how it goes hi baby hi baby girl oh <laughs> what a good girl look at that little tail oh it stopped wagging I see how it is. I see how it is. How goes it, my dudes? Basically, I'm a terrible vlogger, and it is now Friday night. So it's been two days. I think I last updated you on Wednesday. And, yeah, I'm about to make myself some ramen, which I also talked about in the last clip, because it's all I ever eat. And, you know, we're living. I finished Lover Revealed. I did have to watch my last clip to figure out what I was talking about. Basically, I loved it. It was my favorite one so far. I know that there was that slur that was used in it, and that does bother me 
a lot. But looking at the book as a whole, I just really liked it. I love the main character, Butch. He's like my boy, which is really funny. And my friend Hannah makes fun of me for, not makes fun of me, but she teases me about it because I hated him when he was first introduced in the first book. Like I thought he was like douchebag jerk, like wouldn't go away, wouldn't shut the fuck up, like so tired of him. And now I'm like, mm, that's my baby. Growth. And it just, it was interesting. It also really develops. This was also the first book where I really liked like all of the subplots that were happening. I'm also drinking wine, drinking wine. But it was the first book where I really liked all of the subplots basically because yeah, I don't know, I just liked all of them. And finally all the characters that I didn't like like weren't there or it just felt good. It also, okay, my biggest complaint honestly is that it was much less smutty than the first three books. And I'm just thinking, cause like they did like have a, like a couple, like I think three, three or four sex scenes. Um, and they were fine, but like, I think maybe it's because the main pairing Marissa and Butch were introduced to each other so long ago in the series. They were introduced in the first book. So the tension has been building up for a while. And oftentimes like sex is used in the books as a way to like bring the characters together. And I wasn't like, I just felt kind of like lackluster, but I really liked it. It's still my favorite relationship so far, I think. I don't know. I still really like the second one with Rage, which was honestly maybe Lover Awakened. They all have like the same names. Um, yeah, it was just really good. And I, I know I've been complaining about the other books being long, but literally it was like a 16 hour audiobook. I listen to it on double time, but it still is like, that's like eight hours, uh, you know, so it's a lot. And I started the next one, which I think is Lover Unbound. And this one is about Vicious, who is Butch's best friend. They're bros. They're soulmates. I love them. And his, this human surgeon named Jane. And I don't, I think I'm like 20, either 20 or 40% in right now. I literally don't remember and I use my phone to listen so I can't stop recording to check but Vicious basically gets shot and um has and accidentally gets taken to a human hospital instead of like the vampire doctor and so Jane is the one who operates on him because he gets shot in the chest and she's like why the fuck do you have six chambers in your heart which <laughs> new information we just learned that six chambers in their hearts so that's kind of cool and another thing about vicious is that he you know how like they all have curses i don't know if i said that they all kind of have like things that are up with them because of their past but vicious's thing is that he can see visions of the future he can read people's minds and he has a glowy hand that like is kind of magical we don't really know too much about the hand or we learn more about the glowy magic hand in this book in previous books it's established that his visions are drying up like he hasn't had any in a, like a really long time and he can't read people's minds anymore and he's very stressed about it and so in this book when he gets taken from the hospital by his buddies when they come to get him he sees a vision of jane coming with them and so that's why she's like embroiled in this all this scandal and it's a good time I like it a lot. I think the next book is probably going to be Fury because Fury has been very angsty since book three and it's book five now and I think he's at like the peak of his depression. So I think the next book is going to be the one where like I think that's kind of how it works. Like they kind of get really low and they establish that somebody's getting really low in one book and then the next book they're like oh it's your guy. So I think the next book is going to be Fury and then maybe the one after that is going to be John Matthew because we're running out of <laughs> we're running out of warriors here pretty soon we're gonna to have to go to like the second second gen warriors like Blaylock and Lash and Quinn stupid names yeah so I'm just excited and I really like it and oh I was talking to Hannah and I was asking her questions about Vicious's book because I was like I need Vicious to be happy. I'm very worried about him and Vicious is established in the last book 
is very kinky, very into BDSM. And like he keeps an apartment in the city. Oh, that's another thing. Okay, I'll get to that in a second. But he keeps an apartment in the city that's filled with all his like BDSM equipment. And he like summons subs to him. And I was texting her and I was like, I hope that they're gonna, you know, be kinky in the next one. Like, I feel like the warrior vampires wear enough leather. For example, they only wear leather pants and they call them leathers. Uh, and they wear like harnesses and shit with like knives on them. So I'm like, okay, listen, we're almost there. We're almost there. But all of the books have been very like having sex with the person you love. So it's like emotional or like very horny, but still vanilla. And I'm like, listen, they wear leather pants every day. When are they gonna go there? But they're not gonna go there in this one. She told me that um, it's not gonna happen. And I'm honestly a little disappointed because I want, I want the series to go. I mean, it's um, if you're you're writing about vampires who wear leather and have very messed up backgrounds and crave control and are, you know all and like just have them tie somebody up. Like it's that easy. It's that easy. It's that simple. Honestly, what I think would be fun would be, because he's, like, very controlling. He's like, no women can touch me, and I control them, and blah, blah. I think they should switch a switcheroo that whole dynamic, because I think he needs to relax with someone else in charge who he trusts. You know, something like that. I just think it would be good. I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> it's what I'm thinking about right now, and I'm not really liking this book as much as the last one. But I'm having a good time. I'm sorry that I've been absent the past couple days. We finaled the newspaper where I work. We finaled our paper today. So this week has just been kind of a lot of finishing things up and getting ready for next month and figuring out what we're going to do for the next cycle and all that stuff. So it's been a little busy, but I'm back better than ever. Still haven't read Ninth House. Sorry, Hannah. And I think I'm going to finish this bottle of wine break open the other bottle of wine and watch some Disney movies because I'm gonna be real I just don't feel like reading right now <laughs> like I just want to spend Friday night in my house hanging out with my dog watching movies I want to watch some Disney movies I'm just in the mood for it so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm gonna make some ramen now I'll see you guys soon hello again it is what time? It's like 12.45 a.m. after midnight on Sunday the 12th, which means that Smutathon has officially ended. I have my wine. I've been watching TikToks. And I just finished my last and 10th book of the week. It was Lover Unbound by J.R. Ward, the fifth book in the Black Dagger Brotherhood series. And honestly, it's the best one so far. They just keep getting better. And I will say, before I talk so much about how much I love it, a large part of the series is like kind of gender essentialism. Like the gender roles in the vampire society are very strict and very structured and a, a large part of the story. Um, I personally don't really mind it. It does bug me like a little bit when they're like, because they're not human, they don't call each other like men and women, they call each other males and females. And it just like gets on my nerves. Ugh, I don't know, something about it. But I do just really like it. And let me just tell you about the series that it's Vicious, oh, I was right. <laughs> Vicious and Jane do get it on, it is a little kinky, and the, the power dynamics do switch. I was like on the money for that. So good. Their relationship was definitely one of the best in the series because it was one of the most, I feel, organic and it was so good. I will say that this book was definitely interesting and weird because where the rest of the books would finish in terms of like status of the relationship um, and like happiness levels and stuff, um, that actually happened at the 70% mark of this book. So the last 30% was like, I had no idea what was going to happen. Like, I didn't know how it was going to all work out. But I was very impressed by the way it was all brought together. Because I mean, like, the thing is, these are like romance series. 
And I was thinking, like, as I was reading it, um, one thing about series like this, like fantasy, urban fantasy series like this, is because it's a romance and a, an important part of the genre is, like, the happily ever after, there are, the stakes don't feel as high, um, like, in other fantasy series, like, in Game of Thrones, like, every character's is on the chopping block because like they can be sacrificed for the greater story but in romance novels like typically you kind of lose that this one really surprised me with how it turned out and I, I have a few questions but overall I just really enjoyed it I loved the dynamic I think of all of the books that I've read so far in the series which is five these this one had the most developed personality and like real individual personality for the heroine and just a really interesting dynamic between the hero and the heroine like a plus plus jr were very impressive my favorite so far the last three like the number two and then four and five have been my favorites definitely yeah that's what i'm feeling right now let me run through i have them all written down here here the 10 books that i read during this week so i read the play by j h croy for the love of scott by jen fitzgerald give me love by Paige p horn um trouble by lexi timms ruthless king by megan march and then defiant queen by megan march and then sinful empire by megan march and then i also read red white and royal blue by casey mcquiston lover revealed by jr ward and lover unbound by jr ward which when combined should come out to 10 things and honestly i liked a lot of them i think the play got three stars for the love of scott got two or three stars give me love got three stars Def uh ruthless king got four stars defiant queen got four stars sinful empire got five stars it was a five star Red, White, and Royal Blue, five stars. Lover Revealed and Lover Unbound both get 4.5 stars. Yeah, I think that's all of them. I don't really know. All I know is that, honestly, I liked a lot of what I read this week. The biggest disappoint disappointments for me were Trouble and uh, For the Love of Scott. The play was fine. I don't really read sports romances, so, like, it wasn't bad. The sex scenes were really good though. Like I remember the plot was just okay, but the sex scenes were pretty well done. Give Me Love by Paige P. Horn. I liked, but it was like a watered down version of Ruthless King. It just wasn't dark enough and their relationship, while they met and started developing a relationship really quickly, all of the things that were hinted at in the um, description don't really start showing up until like <laughs> the last like 15% of the book. So it was just kind of like, meh okay um i loved ruthless king ruthless king was my least favorite out of the three books because that is where you first have to really confront the dark tones of the story because like he basically is like forcing her to use her body to repay a debt made by her late husband and it's like you really have to like confront that if you want to enjoy the books you have to read it understand that you know obviously that wouldn't be good in real life but it is fiction and you just have to accept that it is the way it is and move past it so that you can enjoy the relationship that they then develop Lachlan and Kira oh, it was so good the second one definitely gets better because they're starting to like build this rapport and they get you know it's very sexy the third one was my favorite because the relationship had developed so much so it was less sex scenes, but more like angsting because they care about each other and they both know that they care about each other. So it was like loving that. Red, White, and Royal Blue is one of the best things that I've read in like so long. Like five stars. It's probably going to be a favorite of the year. That is a bold statement that I'm making because it is only January. But I'm going to say right now it's probably going to be like an all-time favorite book for like for real and then I read the love the lover revealed in lover unbound I'm getting really good at like eyeballing who the future pairings are gonna be so like when they introduce characters I'm like I can see the the groundwork being laid for the future books and I like that I like I looked it up to double check and I was right we love that honestly I did like 
pretty gosh darn well this week and I'm real proud of myself and I read all of that at the expense of Ninth House which I'm supposed to be reading and I've been like it's been like a week and I have not read a single page of it so I still have like 150 pages to go but we're gonna get there and it'll be okay and I will see you guys oh I have a string on my oh I will see you guys next time. Bye.